how would you feed a million dollar racehorse? Think about it for a minute. If you'd spent a million dollars buying a racehorse, how would you be feeding it? How would you be nurturing it? Like that's a bucket load of money. How would you have fed it? Just think about that for a moment. Just think. Now imagine that racehorse is you because it actually is. Seriously, what are you feeding it? What are you feeding you? Are you feeding yourself junk food? Are you feeding yourself junk shit that goes into your brain? Why are you feeding it? You know, like just think about that for a moment. I find it fascinating that if we'd physically paid a million bucks for this body to live in, holy shit, people would treat it so differently. But they don't because they didn't. Now that should make you squirm in some way. It really should. It should be like, oh, fuck, okay, yep, yeah, yeah, get it. But the reality is for most people, they don't. And we abuse this thing that has to carry us around in our lifetime. So if you've got a pet of any kind, like I've got my Harley, my pussycat, and I love her so much. And I'm so particular about feeding her really good food and about emotionally loving on her every day and nurturing her and just consciously helping her feel safe and loved. I, had, I don't have kids in my life at this time, but totally, I, I would do the same thing. And yet we don't do it on ourselves. And I know for myself in the past, and I'm talking about a long time ago, I really, I didn't look after myself like I paid a million bucks for this body. And I totally looked after my pets better than I did myself. And I've learned this lesson a lot over the years and it sits in my brain a lot, but it's crazy that we would, if we did pay a physical amount of money for this body, we would treat it so differently. And it's not just foods, you know, it's about emotions. And so I'm really conscious about how I talk to Harley, my little pussycat. And I, I don't know, I, 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 I want her to feel safe and loved. And yet in the past, I know myself speaking to myself, I've given myself a hard time for stuff that was out of my control. And yet I know I was in control about how I could respond to what happened. And it's just a conscious thing that I've been working on in my life for such a long time. And I know that if I'd physically paid for some, you know, paid for this body up front, I would have treated it so differently. People pay, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 grand for a car and they look after it. They don't go putting shit fuel in the car. They, they get it serviced. They do all those same things for a thing. And yet this is the only thing that keeps us on this planet. It's just, it's crazy. So I learned this lesson when back in the 1980s, I burned out and it was actually, I learned it before I burned out. Well, I started to think about it, but I never took it on. I remember going, it was when I was working in the pharmacy industry. I remember going to a business, you know, there was no business women's networks in those days, but a business network kind of breakfast. And someone was speaking on stage and sharing information from Zig Ziglar. Now, Zig Ziglar was a seriously cool, hard-ass sales guy, but a very wise guy at the same time. And he used this analogy. Zig Ziglar wrote extensively about it, about, you know, if we'd paid a million bucks for a racehorse, how we would look after it and nurture it and that. And he was relating it to business, but it's no different to our physical body. And I remember it slapped me between the eyes. I kind of went, whoa, but I thought from the business point of view, I didn't relate at that time to my body. What I burned out just a couple of years after that, I really went, oh, okay, I get it now. Because I, I, I did the piston party and then all the fun stuff of the 80s and the 70s. I really lived my life and had a great time, but abused my body in the process. And I paid the price and I've learned the lesson. And for the last 30 odd years, I've been living from a place of prevention making sure I don't go back to where I was all that time ago. So that's why I want to share it today. No sensible racehorse owner would not nurture physically and emotionally an animal that they had paid a million bucks for. It would be, it'd be fucking stupid if they did. Um, and yet we, I see people who get this thing, this thing, this physical body carries us around this planet for this lifetime for free and we abuse it. And it, it truly, it's not just crap food. It's crap emotions as well. You know, what do we feed in our brain? I've done lots of podcasts lately on it. I'm really consciously listening to so many podcasts at the moment to fill my brain with the information of what I want in life, 
versus the stuff that's being fed to us through mainstream media and out there at the moment with so much fear and everything going on with the pandemic around the place. That's why I want to talk about this today. Now, I know some of you there are going to be going, yeah, 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 Jen, that's all cool, but it's cheaper to eat unhealthy than to eat healthy. And you're on budgets and, you know, work restrictions and, and, and all that kind of stuff now, I get it. And I've done podcasts on how we pay the price. We pay the price now, we pay the price later, but we always have to pay. I remember, it's maybe 14, 15 years ago now, I really saw the difference between cheap shit and something good for us in, in a real visual. I was going on holidays to the San Juan Islands off Seattle and pulled up there waiting to catch the ferry. And I looked across and he was a mum with three kids and they were at a vending machine. There was a vending machine that had soft drinks on the left and they were a buck each, a buck each. Next to it was a machine that a vending machine that had bottles of water, they were $3 each. And I stood there and went, oh, what? What a choice for a mother to have to make. She's going to buy three drinks or four drinks at a buck each, or she's going to buy three or four drinks at $3 each. And it's a big difference when someone's on a budget, I get it, but we really end up paying the price. And I, I like that saying that, uh, you know, if we do the hard thing now, the rest is easy. Versus if we do the easy now, the rest is hard. So think about that. If we do the hard thing now, which is to say, sorry, kids love you, but we're actually going to have water because that's better for you. And we, you know, you get a half a bottle each to bring the cost back, you know, closer. Versus here, let's do the cheap shit now that's going to wreck your health and wreck your teeth and wreck your brain. You're going to pay this price still. So the whole do the hard thing now gets a better result, easier life later on versus, you know, the other way around. But we have to pay. We just do. And for me, prevention is much cheaper, much cheaper than trying to find a cure later on. And by the way, for those of you who are interested, because I love this kind of stuff, the phrase prevention is better than cure came around from a guy. He was a Dutch philosopher called Desiratus Eraminus, Eramus, Desiderus Eramus, around the 1500s. Um, I can't say his name properly, but do you know what? It's still relevant. The biggest change I've made in my life in the last 30 odd years since I started to learn about health, absolutely. The biggest thing has been to come from a place of prevention. I don't wait to burn out. I don't wait to do crappy sleep. I don't wait to do crappy moods, all those things. I live consciously from a place of prevention. And I, I value this thing like a million dollar racehorse. Really interesting that in you know the, the budgets of big business and government, Generally, less than 3% is of health budgets is spent on prevention. The rest is for cure. Like imagine they swung it even 50-50, a bit more coming from prevention versus having to pay the cost of fixing shit once it's broken. It's wildly different. So I, I asked the question to myself of a day, and it is majority of days. I'll be doing different stuff. And I'm going, well, what's the cost to me? What is this costing me? Whether it's time like I'm moving house at the moment I'm, I'm getting a house closer to the beach and I'm culling shit and I'm, I'm culling you know all the, the stuff that you collect in your kitchen drawers and all that kind of stuff and I looked at it and thought wow you know I could get rid of some of this stuff on marketplace and then I went the physical time of doing that of trying to sell the individual things the bit of money that I would get for it is not worth the time that I could use by gifting that to someone or moving it on and using that time for me to produce more income to be able to help do good, more good in the world or something like that. And so I ask this question of myself daily and it's, it's, it's a balancing. I spend my money, I spend my time to come from a place of prevention. And I'm not just talking food. So I'm talking about, uh, for sure, food. That's a big part of it. And like I say, 90, 89% of the time, I'm, I'm there. I'm in that corridor that just does nothing but feed me goodness friday night having a, a pizza with mates priceless but it's not something that's done every day speaking of mates i'm so conscious of where i spend my time hanging around with other people the people that i surround myself with it's a really conscious thing if there's an energy sucker within my realm first i look to see what the mirror is and then the second i make a conscious choice what's it costing me do I choose to, to be here in this environment or do I choose to move on? That's it. It's a conscious thing that I do. I'm really protective of that. I'm really protective, especially today, of what I'm feeding into my brain. 
So where I have spare moments of time, I'm listening to podcasts, I'm listening to books, things that are uplifting, uh, inspiring me, positive, taking me in the direction of the life that I choose versus having me pulled down in fear. So yeah, the, the whole idea of this, how do you feed a racehorse? It came from a sales guy, Zig Ziglar. I've heard about it in the super early 80s. And I relate it to that living from a place of prevention that I learned about as a naturopath. And, you know, and I've talked before, I, I sleep. I, I am so disciplined with my sleep six nights a week because I know the value of sleeping so well. So I wanted to do this podcast to say, where do you need a tweet? Are you feeding your million dollar resource, you, your physical body, are you feeding it physically right? Are you feeding it emotionally right? Are you environmentally nurturing it? What is it? What do you need to tweak? And so often it's not like you go, oh, shit, I have to tweak 20 fucking things. That's not it. What's one thing? What is one thing you could tweak in the next that you would want to bring change in your life in the next one to three months? What would it be? Think about it. And start that today. Start that action. Is it that you're going to drink more water? Is it that you're going to go to bed, you know, disciplined before 10 p.m. PM at night? Are you going to start listening to positive podcasts? What is it? What's that one thing you can do? Make a choice. Yeah, you know, I even, surfing for me, it, it's physically my exercise. It's emotionally, oh, so nurturing and hanging out with my mates and all that kind of thing. So I made the commitment once that I surf five days a week. That's actually stretched out now to seven days a week because I love it so much and it feeds so much of my mental health plan and my, but my physical plan. And for me, it's better than a meditation. It turns all my happy hormones on, all that kind of stuff. I made the, the choice once. One, one tweak in my life brought so many benefits. What is it? That's it. We want to be doing things that are moving our, ourselves forward in the direction that we choose physically and emotionally. So one step at a time, don't try and change it all at well. Don't try and change it all at once because that's where people go off track. I want people to, to really stand in success. So to do that, just do it methodically. Do this piece, then do this piece, then this piece. Because what I've seen over the years is people are, cool, I'm going to change 10 things at once. Well, shit, then they go into overwhelm and they do nothing that doesn't achieve change. One thing, one thing. So the healthy life hacks for today are, one, what area of my life is most taxed right now? Just acknowledge it. What area is most taxed? Is it physical health, mental health, financial health? What is it? What area of my life is most taxed right now? Boom, do that. Healthy life hack number two, make a life choice from here on in to live from a place of prevention. That's it. And step three, what's one thing, one thing I can do today to move forward to the direction that I choose in my life? And then number four is get yourself into the habit of asking, what is this costing me? Whether it's costing you time, whether it's costing you money, whether it's costing you health, costing you your sanity, whatever it is, I promise that's a question that I ask myself most days. What is this costing me? And that helps me make my choice which direction I'm going to go with whatever has to happen at that time. That's it. Time to get out there and really live life, guys. If you want to check out the show notes, head over to www.healthylifehacks.com.au.